Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Jamie Plays with me, Jamie. I'm here with Cornish Ratbeard and today we are going to be doing a sneak peek of the 3.2 compatibility update that is coming out for Star Trek New Horizons. Hello Cornish, how are you today? Hi Jamie, I'm great thanks. It's really good to be here. Thank you for having me. This is going to be good. Looking forward to this new 3.2 patch. Perfect, so why don't we just jump right in? So of course with any kind of compatibility update, all of the things that were added into the base game Stellaris have now been made compatible with Star Trek New Horizons. So things like any kind of UI changes or AI changes, which was a big part of the base game update this time, or any kind of events, things like that, have all been made very compatible. On top of that, of course, the devs for Star Trek New Horizons have added in lots of content and also fixes as well. So it's going to be an amazing update. Yep, and on top of that, we do have some new ship sets available to us guys. So we've got the Bolians, the Aquatics, and the Acacian ship set. Um, so speaking of the Acacians, I am going to be doing a little sneak peek video on that. I have had a look already and they are looking really good. So a big thumbs up to the devs for that. I will be putting that out pretty soon. And uh, yeah, make sure you, you catch that one. Absolutely. I think it's great that they're still adding in new species and new ship sets as well. Actually, speaking of new ship sets, the Federation actually has a new ship set. And this is actually an optional ship set, so you actually have to unlock it via a tradition called um, Starfleet Ships of the Line, which is a new one for this update. Um, I have just put out a video with all of the information on those ships, so you can go see it. Um, but it looks like it's going to add a lot of flavor and also a lot of powerful ships in the end game. So it's definitely one to think about when you're playing the Federation. Absolutely. Be sure to go check that one out, guys. On top of that as well, going down the list further, we have the ISS Discovery, which has been added to the Terran Empire, along with Berman and Captain Tilly. Those are really epic captains, guys. So if you want to check that out as well, I do have that. It is in my playthrough episode 15. So be sure to go check that out for a first look as well. Um, also, the Klingon Bird of Prey can now cloak, which is uh, which is awesome. The cloak was already in the game, but now it just kind of functions right. And that is credit to Mike Sucks at Game. So big thumbs up to him. Well done. Yes, in fact, there is a community program that if you would also like to contribute to this mod, you can as well. Speaking of other things that the community have contributed, there are also some pop species and empire changes as well as uh, event changes. So for example, Mike Sucks at Games also added some updated and unique traits to make the Klingon species um, even more Klingon. So they have a different playset than just a typical warrior-like race. Um, another one from the community as well, this time from Nebi, is that there was a derelict ship event um, that was in the game and it's been added via this community collective program. So thanks a lot both to Mike Sucks at Games and for Nebi for their contributions. In addition, there are some other things that have been added besides just the Cations. So for example, the Rogelian starting system has also been updated, so look for that. And another addition, the Antaran Commonwealth has been added as a warp capable primitive species. So you might remember this one from Star Trek Enterprise. So a little bit of background, the Denobulans fought a war with the Antarans and basically conquered them and really demoralized them. They've been added into the game and on top of that there has been a feud that's been added between the Denobulans and the Antarans, which will most likely have a negative diplomatic effect. Um, so that will re be really interesting to see. Yep, moving down the list again, we have other content. Uh, the Cajun military uniforms have been added to go along with their awesome ship set. The Undine Borg invasion can now start even without the Civil War, so that is a biggie. That's going to happen even if you, um, you know, you're hanging around and you, you didn't quite colonize the right planet or terraform it, sorry, or whatever. That's going to happen. Um, all good things. Admiral uniform added. Great stuff. And a few other little bits there. You can see small update to the Alpha Centauri system as well. So awesome stuff. Absolutely. I think as I'm playing the Undine at the moment, the uh, the Borg invasion will be very nice because you no longer have to go through the previous event chains first in order to actually escape fluidic space. It's been very nice. 
In addition, so with this 3.2 update also comes the Aquatics DLC from um, Paradox Interactive, the people who make the base game. And as part of that, they've added, actually added in aquatic species. Well, that has also been adapted in part for Star Trek New Horizons as well. So there are two species that have been added, though for both of these species, you have to have the Aquatics DLC to play them. Otherwise, they will be in the game, but you're not able to play them. The first is the Chalarians. They're kind of a turtle looking race from Star Trek The Motion Picture. Um, and they've also been featured prominently in some of the novels. So they have been added into the game as a playable faction, and they will use the new aquatic ship set um, that we described earlier. On top of that, there's also the Selkies. So they were also a race that saw, we saw about the same time, and they've been added as a warp capable species. On top of that, on top of all of the content, there are of course always the fixes that come in through the game as well. So for example, there are a lot of ship fixes. Um, a big one that I know people were um, very harsh about with the previous update was that the USS Defiant had a fixed fire rate of something like 239% or something crazy around there. That's of course been fixed. Um, models have been fixed, decals have been fixed, things like that. If you're going through the um, Wolf 359 um, event, there will now only be one cube that appears, one Borg cube instead of two cubes, and also a big one for the Undine. Their planet weapon and the World Cracker weapon have now also been fixed. You will need the Apocalypse DLC for both of those. Additionally, um, a number of events have been fixed, as well as, for example, the Admonition event chain that you get as the Romulans. Apart from that, there have been additional um, fixes for pops, or for portraits, or for, for example, the Vulcan life expectancy has been increased as well. So pop species and portraits have also been fixed. Um, the Dominion tradition has been unlocked for the correct races, including the, including the Dominion, which is very important. Um, Starbase modules will no longer cause your game to crash to desktop. That was sometimes happening. There are some UI fixes and there are some other kind of generic fixes. For example, Section 31 agents no longer cause planets to be 200% habitable. So how things should operate within the game that are currently within the game should now hopefully be operating correctly. So I'm really, really looking forward to playing this new 3.2 update and seeing kind of how the game has changed. How about you, Cornish? What are you most interested yeah. in from this list? Well, there's a few things. Um, probably the Cation ship set and the uh, ship of the line traditions tree for the Federation. Also, just going back to uh, the traditions fixes there, the Terran Empire now has access to the uh, domination tradition. Um, I did discover that one while playing in the Terran Empire playthrough that we couldn't use that at all. So we couldn't subjugate any of the um, empires out there, but now we can, so that's great. You did miss a really important one there, Jamie, Harry Kim's portrait. Hey, mm, absolutely. what a fix that is. Absolutely. I mean, if that guy has had some rotten luck through his career, then now he, he's just been redeemed with a portrait of Harry Kim. So excellent stuff there. Um, going back through the list as I'm looking now, I think the Bolian ship set is going to be awesome as well. In general, the ship sets for me are probably the big one and the, uh, the inclusion of the ISS Discovery and Berman and Captain Tilly. They are a bit some big highlights for me. Any other highlights for you? Well, I think you've already said the, the Starfleet ships of the line. I think it's going to be very interesting. So a lot of them, as I said, are non-canon ships. They're beta canon ships, meaning they're from the either Star Trek games or from um, Star Trek novels. But I think they're going to add in a lot of flavor as well. Um, and I'm also interested to see how this kind of trait that uh, Mike Sucks at Games added is going to change the Klingons as well. That could be very interesting. And of course, with their cloaking as well. I'm really looking forward to this new content. I think it's going to be going to make it just even more Star Trek. Absolutely, I agree with you. Um, if any of you are not really familiar with the, the Cajuns, then um, we do have a doctor, don't we? On um, the new Star Trek Lower Decks program. Is exactly. that right? Dr. Ta'ana. Who is yeah? Who is the chief medical officer? Actually, I didn't know this, That's the but one. there there is a, another Cation who appears, and it's in um, the animation, so the animated um, version of the original Star Trek. There was a Lieutenant Emris, um, M apostrophe R E S S, 
who was also a Cation. Um, and again, they're basically yeah, yeah. Kind of a cat-like race. Um, so I think it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of how this develops. She had the um, the red command dress on, didn't she? Yes, she did. Yeah, I remember her. Yeah, yeah, good character. So um, yeah, Ooh, really, really good. Really looking forward to it. And again, guys, we just want to to let you know that we are really happy to be bringing you all these sneak peeks. So I hope um, you enjoy them because we appreciate you all viewing them. And uh, yeah, we we we'll definitely be uh, seeing you soon. Yeah, and remember, if you've liked this video. If you like getting these sneak peeks, remember to both like the video and subscribe to both of our channels because we both put out sneak peeks and tutorial videos and things for Star Trek New Horizons. So yeah, I think it's now time for us to sign off. It's been a lot of fun and we'll see you next time for another episode of Star Trek New Horizons. See you next time, guys. Bye. Bye for now.